many people approach Queen's Blood by trying to get as high a score as possible and hope that your score in each lane is higher than the opponent's but why bother when you can just conquer every single square and deny the opponent any card on the field? What if I tell you that there is also a very easy and consistent way to do this? Hey guys, welcome to my Conqueror deck tech in Queen's Blood in FF7 Rebirth. A little bit of description on how the deck works and the key cards in the deck before we begin the matches. I will have two separate matches against end game Queen's Blood players in the game just to show you how effective and consistent this deck is and also it's actually very very easy to play. The key cards here are the two Conqueror cards, which is the two Marlboro cards at the bottom right. The Marlboro card isn't a legendary card, so you can actually play two copies. This card is absolutely broken, provided you can play it in the ideal square on the board, which is the very middle square, the one with the Queen's Blood, and then the square right to it on the second Marlboro copy. That sounds extremely difficult, but the rest of the 13 cards in the deck is built to allow you to easily achieve this. First off, you have 6 cards, which is the 2 Manjagora, 2 Hitseeker, and 2 Amalgam cards that provide you an additional copy. So they are essentially 12 cards in total, and they also have very good retail space, so to speak. They capture a lot of spaces around them and all of them allow you to advance one pawn on the right and this is actually very key all of them are also one power cards which is equally important because you are combining this with the mind flayer card and this actually allows you very easily to build three pawns on the middle square with the queen's blood logo on it and allow you to easily place the marlboro card and then destroying the second column from the right Sounds very complicated here, but you'll see it when I go into the match. The remaining cards are optional. There are actually a few different cards that you can fit in here. I decided to go firstly with the Ski Ski card and the Black Bat card. The main reason is that both these cards are also one pawn cards that also capture a lot of spaces around them. And this allows you to very easily conquer your side of the board. The Ski Ski card in particular also has a bonus effect where anytime you lose a card, the Ski Ski card will gain in power and because you'll be feeding a vast majority of the cards to the Mind Flayer, the Ski Ski cards actually grow up to immense strength. That being said, because you essentially conquer every single tile in the deck, you don't really need high power cards, you can even win the match with like 5 points at the end because almost every game the opponent will have 0 points. So you could also include other cards, such as the Deathclaw card for example if you want, the Kappa Wire card or the Ash Dragon card also allows you to at least uh, conquer a few more spaces and they are all one pawn cards. But I like this combination the best. Finally you have the Shiva card, the Shiva card is designed to be the last card that you will ever play and this will essentially fill up the rest of the board, allowing you to really conquer the entire board. There isn't a lot of RNG involved, so this deck is actually very consistent, this is why I actually like this deck. There are other decks that I've also tried in the past and the main thing that I try to go for usually is consistency and ease of play. I'll show you how easy it is to set up and conquer the entire board, so let's head into the match and I'll narrate as we go along. First off is the mulligan at the start. The mulligan is very easy. There's really only one card that you really really want and that's the mind flayer card. And you only need one mind flayer card, you don't need both of it. So if you have the mind flayer in your opening hand, keep it. If you don't have the mind flayer card at all in the opening hand, mulligan every single card. This greatly increases the chance that you get at least one mind flayer in your opening hand. If you did start with a mind flayer in your opening hand, then what you want to do is Mulligan away the Amalgam card, the Marlboro card, the Shiva card. You don't need these 3 cards until later on in the match. 
Now, even if you get super unlucky and you don't even have a mind flayer after mulliganing away five cards, don't worry too much about it because it's very very likely that you draw mind flayer within the first few cards. So in this example, I don't have mind flayer, so I'll just mulligan away every single card. You have ten one pawn cards, so. When you mulligan away every single card, it is very likely that you draw at least one or two of them and you actually don't even need a lot of them to begin with. That is really how flexible the deck is. Now I got super unlucky here and I still don't have a mind player, but like I said, it's very likely that you draw one soon and I did actually draw one right there. Now the starting match, what you want to do is gun to aim to plant down the mind player on the second row bottom lane. Sorry, second column bottom lane. And it's very easy to achieve this, so you want to place one of your one pawn cards at the middle and bottom of the first column. If you have the black bat or the ski ski card, those are the cards that I would recommend to plant on the first column. Save your other one power cards as fodder to feed the mind flayer. Then simply place one of the one power cards in the middle of the second column. This will give you two pawns to create the mind flayer at the bottom. Once you place the mind flayer, the early game is done and you're moving on to the mid phase of the match. The mid phase of the match is where you contest the opponent for the entire middle column. This is actually extremely easy with the mind flayer card. All you want to do here is to react to the opponent. Each time they change a pawn in the middle column to red, you want to change it back to green. Now this is actually very critical, you want to try to preserve as much as possible. At the very least, save the square in the middle, the one with the queen's blood. Do not let the opponent capture that one. The mind flayer card makes it extremely easy for you to achieve this. Notice that after I play the mind flayer, there are two squares above it that are glowing purple and they have a permanent negative one power. You are abusing this by feeding all your one power cards into this so-called black hole. Placing one pawn cards on the black hole to the left will conquer the square in the middle, the one with the queen's blood. Placing cards on the queen's blood square will conquer usually the spaces at the bottom and the top. And you're just sort of defending the first three columns for now. Just keep placing your one power cards and changing all the pawns in the first three columns to green. Eventually, the opponent will run out of cards that they can play and they will give up. There's really no real need to rush to place the Marlboro card and once the opponent gives up, this is now the final stage of the game where I'm now increasing the pawn in the middle to 3 and it's very easy to do it, just continue feeding your 1 power cards in the black hole to the left and eventually the black hole to the right will be 3 pawns and you can place a Marlboro card there and start conquering the 4th column Here you just want to rinse and repeat, do it one more time and increase the pawn to 3 using your 1 power cards and then placing the marble card to finally conquer the final column. There's actually a lot of 1 power cards that you have. You can see here that even after contesting and building my side of the board, I actually still have leftover 1 power cards. Now this is actually very consistent. The great thing about the marble card is that it not only destroys an entire column, it also re replaces the pawn with green pawns. So after destruction, the opponent still can't play any cards on the destroyed spaces. And because you've spent a lot of time conquering all the pawns on the first three columns before placing the Marlboro, all these spaces remain uncontested. Once every single tile is captured, you can just place the Shiva card for an easy win. I move on to another match just to showcase the same strategy again against a different player. Here's another match against another endgame AI player. Just to show how consistent the deck really is. This time around I got lucky and I start off with one mind flayer card in hand and that's really all you need. Like I said, you can then proceed to mulligan off any Marlboro card, Shiva card, or Amalgam card you have in your hand and you're really good to go. So again, early match, the goal is to set up the Mind Flayer card. Put any of your one pawn card in the middle, one in the bottom, 
I messed up and used the Manjo Gora card. I actually would have preferred to use Manjo Gora card as fodder for the Mind Flayer, but it doesn't really matter too much anyway, so use anything that you want. At the end of the day, the opponent will have zero score because they have zero cards, so it really hardly matters you know, if you are off optimal play by a little bit. I would recommend placing the Heat Seeker card right there if you have it. If you don't, just place any of the other cards. As long as you increase the pawn at the bottom to 2 pawns, so that right here you can place the Mind Flayer card. The Mind Flayer card also at least guarantees that the pawn in the middle board, the one the King's Blood becomes green. And from here on, you are just defending the first 3 columns. So place cards to change the pawns to green in the first 3 columns. And keep doing this until the opponent gives up and has no more cards to play. While you are doing this and defending the first 3 columns, you will also be drawing the rest of the deck and you will eventually of course draw into the Marlboro card. If you have the Ski Ski card, I would recommend placing it in the first column but again the priority is ensuring that the pawn in the middle never becomes red so like here it changed to red you immediately want to change it back to green so i'm still not in any rush to place the marlboro card i'm just conquering pawns as i go along Oh, middle square is red, so change it back to green. Beauty of Mind Flayer is that it guarantees that you can always place a card in the middle of the second column, and you have so many cards that will capture the middle square, and this will become a non issue. The opponent will never be able to capture the middle square that way. So, here the opponent has given up, there's nothing else that they can play, so place the Marlboro card to start destroying their columns and then place another Marlboro card to destroy the first column and the game is gone. GG Now there's still a lot of cards that you can play here of course, you can always end the match here and just win because the opponent has zero, but if you want a higher score, you can continue feeding cards to the Mind Flayer and boost up your Ski Ski cards, and then you can place the Shiva card to get a lot of extra score on all the unclaimed squares. Whether you want to do that or not is really up to you, but uh, I'm just doing it as a demo here. You can still comfortably get a score of 50 to 60, which I know isn't the highest, people can get more than 100 score, but I feel it's always fun to deny the opponent any square on the board. Hope this video has been helpful and thanks for watching!